make sure the volume is down. Test, test. Test, test. It's down. Is it okay? It's not, it's not all the way up, is it? Because I, because I have it in the center. Check, 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 check. Okay, good. Check. Ed says he heard him, he heard him.
the love of God poured into our hearts, the saving grace of Jesus Christ, and the abundant life of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, also with you. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Stay with us now, for it is evening. Let your light scatter the darkness. God be with you all. Let us sing our thanks to God. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence, the light of our pathways, and you are the light and life of all creation. Ah. For our reading tonight, a poem called Little Prayer by Dennis Smith. Let ruin end here. Let him find honey where there was once a slaughter. Let him enter the lion's cage and find a field of lilacs. Let this be the healing, and if not, let it be.
Let us together pray. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend upon us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to rise for the gospel. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree and I still find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Here ends the reading. You may be seated. So in tonight's gospel, actually the second half, we hear a parable from Jesus. Jesus, of course, spoke a lot in parables, and they're so interesting because, well, first, they're always open to interpretation. And that was on purpose because Jesus' teaching was all about a spiritual, not an earthly understanding of what the kingdom of God here on earth should look like. And also, because they were open to interpretation, not everyone would understand them. Those who sought to understand that heavenly kingdom would. Those who refused to seek to understand the heavenly kingdom, well, they would not understand the parable. You see, it's all about a spiritual understanding. In Matthew 13, Jesus tells us, therefore, I speak to them in parables. Because seeing they do not see, hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. So with so much of this interpretation and, and tonight's parable of the fig tree, we got to wonder, who is the gardener? Who is the homeowner? I'll call him a homeowner. Who or what does the fig tree represent? Where does God or Jesus or, or humanity come into play? Do any of them? And what's up with the fig tree? I mean, why does it need manure? So with all of that, let me entertain you with this, this point of view. First, Jesus' ministry was preaching to a following that understood life in their, their time and space. They're thinking that in terms of judgment, God was a judgmental God, one who cast vengeance and punishment on the sinners. So when they are asking questions, when they are questioning Jesus on the death of these Galileans who were massacred and the ones who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, to them it wasn't a matter of why these people died, but what sin did they commit? Which would also mean, on the other hand, those who did not encounter God's wrath, those who continue to live, well, they assume they must be in God's favor. They were the ones who felt that they were above these untimely deaths or accidents or misfortune because, well, these were God's chosen people. 
So here's the twist. The disciples are not asking why these people died. They figured they died because they were sinners. But rather they were asking, what did these people do? These people who died, what did they do to deserve this death? The danger, the point in all this, the danger in this is their assumption. It's their, their sanctimonious, their self-gratifying point of view. So let's go back to that parable again of the fig tree. And I would ask, who are we? Where do we see ourselves? You know, often we see ourselves as the fig tree, right? The recipient of God's grace. The fig tree that just couldn't get it together. But what if we were the homeowner? What if we were the owner of the tree? The vineyard owner? And when we look at this in consideration of this when we look at consideration of the scripture in this time of Lent a time of repentance it gives us a unique view of the homeowner why because the homeowner is presumptuous the homeowner sees this fig tree hasn't produced fruit in three years okay so so throw it out I assume it's not doing well it's not doing what I thought it should. It's not looking how I thought it would look. It's not acting how it should act. It's not fitting in with the rest of the fig trees around it. It's struggling. It's making mistakes. It's not understanding. It's not listening. It's doing the wrong thing. And I'm wondering, how often are we like the homeowner in the, in the, view, of his, in the view of his fig tree? Quick to judge. Quick to assume. Quick to discard the bad. We don't want to see the possibilities. We want instant results. Why? Because we, we want satisfaction. We want instant gratification. And if that tree hasn't produced fruit in three years, throw it out. But we have a gardener who says, hold on. Stop. Give it more time. Let me work with it. Let me nurture it. Let me, let me work an opening in their heart, in their mind, to another way. Let me love on it. This is a gardener of compassion. What we assume is unlovable, God shows unconditional love. When we assume disloyalty, God shows us faithfulness. When we assume neglect, God gives us grace. When we assume punishment, God says no, forgiveness. When we assume judgment, God gives us mercy. And when we assume hatred and indifference, God shows us compassion. Remember, church, Jesus came to upend our understanding of what God's kingdom here on earth should look like. This time in Lent is about a new way of looking at things. It, it's about a time to seek to see and understand the world in a heavenly kingdom sort of way. It's all about a spiritual understanding. As we come to God in repentance, asking God for the renewal of our hearts and our minds and our actions. And in response, there is a God who shows us a way of mercy, a way of forgiveness, and an endless, endless supply of compassion. So much so that we can give it away again and again and again and again. Still never run out. Amen.
great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. rise. Let us bless our God. May God create or bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Amen. Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.